Welcome back to Black Caesar Lessons once more. Thank you for stopping in. I do appreciate the company here. Um, the first thing I want to say to you is that always remember that this analysis of self, this video on self, is just one person's opinion of the poem by Kamar Brathwaite. Now, if you have other misconceptions or other ideas that you need clarified, you can always search other websites, other YouTube channels to find out something that is probably missing from here. Of course, I know I won't be able to cover every single thing on the poem self, but I am trying here to give you as much as I can. Now let's get straight into this one, South by Kamal Brathwaite. Now the poem South is one of nostalgia. The poet is reflecting, the persona is reflecting, and the persona is looking at the common ideas and themes where that are based on a person moving from one's home or territory and going to another place to live. There is that longing for home. There is the idealization of childhood. And of course, there is that dislocation of people based on different reasons. Some may be as a result of social unrest, some may be personal conflicts, some may be personal gains, some may be oppression, whatever it is though. There is that nostalgia where the persona is longing for home. And so the persona becomes reflective throughout the poem as he speaks with pride, joy, enchantment, and longing for the place of his birth. The title of the poem, South, will automatically give you an indication that the poet or the persona is referring to islands that are not in North America. So we will be talking about the Caribbean islands then, um, Africa, yes. We would also be talking about South America, that region there that was largely associated with slavery at one point or another. And because of the slavery that existed there, um, decades ago, people had moved away from the South into the North because they sought freedom. There was more freedom, more opportunities there. And so for those reasons, the people had left the South and had gone to the North. But the persona here in the poem is longing for home. The poet seems to here be dealing with some sort of conflict. And that conflict would have been an internal conflict, basically, where he wants to, to, to go back home. There is that longing, that internal thoughts of being in the North where there is opportunity, there is freedom, and yet he is longing for the scenery that is associated with the islands. The speaker, of course, reflects on the islands. He also reflects on the scenery that's there through that clear visual image. The beaches that are there as well, those are the things that we realize that a persona misses more than anything else. In the first stanza, the speaker sees the bright beaches, the blue mist in line two. And he also looks at the fishermen's houses of the shores and listens to the sound of the sea, where life heaved and breathed with the strength of the turbulent soil. The language creates striking visual images and gives us a clear indication of the landscape. The blue seas and the glistening sunlight. No. He also uses personification with the earth. And he, the phrase life heaved, heaved and breathed and down to the turbulent soil allows the persona to bring life to the ones who are under, under his feet. Sorry, <laughs> bringing life to the ones under feet. In this place, he seems to be one with the sea, of course. And as he possesses the energy and the vitality that comes with it, it is, you get that idea then that the island is has a beating heart, that the island is actually human, and so the personification is clear here. In stanza two, the persona opens with the comments that he has traveled and that he has moved away from the beaches, and of course he's in the north, and so he has seen different climates. Now, the Caribbean climate, the climate in the south, is relatively warm, and it allows for the tropical beauty. It allows for the beaches, it allows for the sunshine, it allows for all of those things that a person misses. And this is in direct contrast to the setting in the north. We also realize, we clearly realize that the, the person has traveled away from the beaches of his land, the beauty, the sunset, all of that. And he is, he is now in a society, a setting, sorry, why am I stumbling? He's now in a setting where there is whole stone foundations, nothing like he left in the south. And then there is the cluster of trees and buildings and all of that. So it takes away, right away, from that which he is accustomed to in the south. 
The poet describes also a place which makes him feel oppressed in its gloomy shadows. And the whole idea of an industrialized society in the north would take away from the whole natural setting of the Caribbean islands. And so we here see the contrast that exists within the two spheres. Now, the poet continues, and for him, he does not have the appeal of strength of the strength of the ocean, which is usually symbolic of life and the limitless opportunities, the renewal of the resources that takes place within regions that have natural resources still in effect there is not much destruction by way of industrialization and so he misses that because he can compare both settings here that which is in the north where there is a fast-paced society industrialization has settled in there are more buildings than trees and he can compare that to that which he left in the south of course there is development in the south but there is also still that element of nature that remains the beauty of the seas these are not muddy, these are not dirty by factories that tends to destroy the natural habitat. And in stanza three, one notices that the speaker's immediate switch from the pronoun I to we in line 30 suggests that he is including himself among the people who are born of the ocean line of the ocean in line 13. Now, based on the ideas that a person presents, these people they have no solace. In the rivers because this is strikingly different from the seas the freedom of the seas for the people of the ocean there is boundless nature and a longing for the unknown and the freedom of the ocean comes with its unpredictable nature which is in direct contrast to a river where the river is bound by the channel through which it travels here the river can also symbolize that people no longer have that purpose in line 15, it is clear. The river symbolizes a lack of endeavor and purpose. There is a bland predictability of how the river will flow only in one direction. But in contrast, the sea is just an expanse of beauty. In stanza four, he opens with the words, but today, in line 19. And there is that indication that there is going to be some kind of change from that which he is accustomed to, the norm that he has grown accustomed to. So we are looking forward to something else happening after line 19. The speaker personifies the river when he talks about the patient is flowing in line 20 as one which is allowed to hear its steady energy as it flows through the repetition of sound from lines 20 and 24. Now again in stanza 5 and 6, we realize that the journey in the speaker's mind goes back to the island and to the ocean. And it is in line 25 that he clearly makes it known, he makes it known clearly, sorry, that the ocean refreshes him as does the waves. Waves will splash up from the rocks and here he creates that picture. Again, he goes into that rich visual imagery that there is a beautiful idyllic landscape that is common in the south, the sea life, the sea creatures, and the fishermen's houses, which he does not see in the north. No, the literary device is used in the poem. You'll find alliteration along with the ones that I just mentioned in a brief summary. And I'm going to give you the lines, the stanzas, and possibly the lines that you can find them on. Alliteration comes in stanza one, lines one to two. No, there is also alliteration again in lines four to five in the same stanza. In stanza two, lines 13 to 14, you'll find alliteration. In stanza four, line 33, and stanza five, line 43. In stanza one, lines one to two, the sound that the alliteration brings across comes when it's spoken in a positive one. This is the case because the alliteration forces the reader now to listen to that cheerful sound and thereby creating that interpretation that the persona is happy to be home. In lines four to five, the alliteration does something here again. It draws the reader into the sound that it creates. So whereas Whereas lines one to two presents the alliteration as one where it indicates that a person is happy to be home. The second alliteration here is where one can almost hear the sound that the C makes through the repetition of its sounds, of the S sounds. Here we see an emphasis also on the joy that the person feels to be home. In lines 13 to, 15, 13 to 14, alliteration is there again. And this emphasizes the speaker's discomfort and dislike of the new content that he is faced with, the context that he's faced with, sorry. 
he's in a new setting. And so, of course, it is foreign to him. It is new to him. And he contrasts this with a scene that he describes in stanza one. In lines 33, the device gives the reader a visual image of the scene. There is that simple highlight of the persona's excitement at being home and of seeing the scenes that he had grown fond of as a child. And even though they seem inconsequential at the time, the persona knows and loves all of that. In lines 43, the alliteration gives the reader a visual context of what the persona sees as pleasant and calming, as opposed to stanza two, where there is a lack of pleasantness and calmness around him. The sound that the alliteration presents here is a calm one and implies also that the persona is at peace. Personification. Now, I went through personification at the start of the video, but let's go into more details as to where we can find it. We find personification in lines of six to seven. Now, here we have a beautiful impression of the effect that the island had on the persona. He felt whole when he came back home. He was at peace on that island. In lines 16 to 17, we also find personification again. The shadows in this context represents his past life and experiences on the island. The memories of the island brings about that feeling of sadness, and to some extent, he becomes homesick. These memories present an oppressive shadow over his life in the north. Now, we also have simile. The person comes compares a persona, sorry, compares the flowing of the rivers, which represents the north, to his longing for his island home. home. There is comparison here, and this comparison brings out to us as readers the longingness that he feels and that it is intense because he is homesick. Now here are some important words and phrases. Recapture. The word capture means to possess something. Now if you recapture something, it means then that you had captured it before, you had let it go for whatever reasons, and you know you have come back to it. In line five, since then I have traveled, this line indicates that a persona had not remained on the island of his birth, but that he had been going from places to places. Sojourned in the Estonia cities, in line six, is the highlights a it highlights a contrast between the persona's island and the cities that he has visited. His island, of course, has oceans and beaches, and the cities there, it was more like um, a concrete jungle where everything, um, you find buildings, you find structures made of stone, and that in itself is opposite to what he experienced growing up in the South. Then we have, we are born of the ocean. Can We who are born of the ocean can never seek solace in rivers. Here, persona is talking about the north and the populace of the north as rivers, while the south and his island, they are the ocean. This line highlights the persona's discontent with the north. Um, reproves us or lack of endeavor and purpose, that's a different one. When you reprove, you, it means then that you have to correct, you reprimand. And therefore the line is saying that the river that is flowing north, it reprimands, it's correcting, reproving the ocean in the south for its lack of effort and resolve. This would suggest that the persona might be homesick and therefore he is not operating on his full capacity. He is not operating fully functional because he has other thoughts that are clouding his mind, that is, that is clouding his mind. Pros are striving will founder on that. The term founder literally means that the owner or that it's the owner or operator of a foundry. This has very little to do with the context of the poem, but one can assume that the poetic license in the poem will allow for this point to come in. Contextuality. That is the line that can be interpreted as meaning that the persona's subsequent striving or efforts can be founded on the reproof, the reprimand that is made by the river or the north. And then we have there. The emphasis is placed on this word through the use of italics, and this is important because it creates that value of the fact that the persona is both happy and excited to be back home. Next up is, and look, now there is the use of the exclamation mark. The exclamation of mark, of course, we all know that it expresses enthusiasm. In this case, yes, it does. The persona is excited and he identifies a scene that is reminiscent of his past. And here we realize just how happy he is when he thinks about his home. 
Now the tone of the poem, it shifts. At first, there is that reflective tone, that nostalgic one. And this shifts as well to him becoming elated, happy that he, he is home. Now the mood of the poem is also reflective. The persona thinks about his island home as well as places that he has visited in the north and he compares them mentally and presents them to us, the readers, for us to see the striking difference between what he knows and what he is slowly learning. Now the themes, the common themes in the poem, and of course there are more, there is desires and dreams, there is places and also patriotism. Thank you so much for stopping by and I do hope this helped you. Remember people, if you have watched to the end, always remember check other sources as well, just to reinforce what you are getting here. Thank you so much for watching.